A little bit of unscheduled excitement uh, for the crew of Expedition 42 today on board the International Space Station. Here to tell me a little bit more and update us on the current status, the program manager, Mr. Mike Suffordini. Mike, if you could start us off, just kind of walk us through the genesis of what happened this morning. This morning at about 4 a.m., uh, the um, systems indicated to us on the ground that there were four measurements that uh, indicated to off scale. Um, and at that time, the team didn't know what that was, uh, what the cause of that was. Um, and so one of those was uh, what we refer to as accumulator quantity. It's, the, it's the, basically the water level in one of the coolant loops inside the lab. And so um, this is important because uh, we have a uh, risk that we worry about or, or at least protect against. Mm -hmm. Um, and this has to do with getting ammonia into into the uh, crew environment. So the way we cool the space station is we have an ammonia system outside um, that transfers the heat from a water system inside, and the water system is inside to protect the crew. You don't want to have hazardous chemicals flowing through the water loops. Mm -hmm. So we have heat exchangers where we exchange the heat between the water loop inside and the ammonia loop outside. So that's one location where ammonia can... Uh, leak if you have a failure inside a heat exchanger, which they're designed to prevent. Um, you could potentially uh, leak ammonia because at higher pressure outside. You could leak ammonia into the water loop, uh, and then there's a path uh, through which it can find its way into the cabin. Mm -hmm. And so one of the telltale signs of a potential ammonia leak uh, would be if the accumulator uh, indicated you were filling up. And, and so this failure mode that we saw this morning, this alarm, indicated that the accumulator was filling up. Okay. Amongst some other indications, but this was the one of, of biggest concern. Uh, and so the team, that was the beginning of a discussion about are we dealing with a, a real ammonia leak into the water or not. Now, as everyone knows, ammonia is a very hazardous uh, chemical, and so um, if this is possible, then mm -hmm. we, we immediately... Um, safe the vehicle and get the crew in a safe place. So the way the station is designed, we have two main uh, segments, if you will. We have the Russian segment, uh, which, can, which houses the service module and the FGB and the, and the ports associated with those two modules. Okay. And then there's an interface between that segment, the Russian segment, and the forward part of the space station called the US operating segment. And that interface is at the node. And so for these kinds of emergencies, this specific emergency, we only have ammonia on the, on the USOS side of the vehicle. Okay. The plan is to have the crew go into the Russian segment, close the node hatch, and then we have some steps to take. So they don their masks, they get into the Russian segment, they close the hatch, they do some uh, dragger tube testing, we call it, to look for ammonia mm -hmm. in the atmosphere of the Russian segment, make sure that hasn't been contaminated. And then the team on the ground begins the process of trying to sort through the anomaly. So that's the steps we took because of the indications we had. Okay. Um, confusing things a little bit was we also saw an increase in pressure in the cabin. So if you're leaking ammonia into the water loop and it eventually finds its way into the cabin, then you would expect the cabin pressure to go up. So that was another potential So that's another indicator. cue. Okay. And, uh, and those two cues together had the team really go into sort of a conservative mode to go protect the crew. Mm -hmm. So we did exactly that. We got the crew on the mast. They got into the Russian segment. They closed the hatch. We checked the environment. Um, and since that time, we have been sorting through this anomaly. And, act, and, and in fact, we did it twice. Um, early on, we sent the crew in because we didn't have the confirming cue, um, at least not very solid. So we had the we had the accumulator, but not really. The pressure wasn't changing dramatically. Mm -hmm. But we sent the cr crew to the Russian segment to be safe. Finally, decided maybe this is just a, a, a um, some sort of MDM problem because so many we lost so many measurements at one time. We let the crew come back into uh, the U.S. lab, and then uh, shortly after that, the pressure started to climb in the cabin. That's a that's a confirming cue, and so then we went through the procedure. The crew donned the mask again and went back in the Russian segment and have been there ever since. Uh, the measurements on the Russian segment showed no indication. The mm -hmm. crew is uh, they're not they don't have mask on. They're just in the Russian segment. Um, doing the doing their uh, the work that they can do while they're in there, um, and of course we have all the CO2 removal, oxygen generation, food, all the things mm -hmm. the crew needs. They have uh, in the Russian segment, so they're safe there. Meanwhile, in the U.S. segment, the team has been working very hard to try to sort through the anomaly. 
Mm -hmm. At this point, the team does not believe we leaked ammonia. Okay, um, so no no hard evidence, no real indication so no. far that any ammonia was what, leaked. What we what we are dealing with is um, these this failure of probably a card inside of uh, one of our multiplexer demultiplexers. It's just a computer that mm -hmm. um, that sends telemetry down and brings commands back up, and um, and this card has a number of measurements on it, and those were the measurements we lost, and through a source of how the systems reacted and what happens when you isolate the crew and shut off the ventilation and um, and all the things steps we take along the way we shut we power down systems with quite a bit of things are done we we shut off the outside big big pump mm -hmm. and we we depress the big pump so it's not providing as much pressure to try to push ammonia into the into the cabin um, of course, that means we have to power things down. So a lot's going on, and we think there's something in that made the pressure change that was, uh, you know, that kind of uh, gave the team a little bit of a, uh, a question about, uh, at the time, of course, it looked like a no-kidding pressure increase. Yeah. Now we're looking at thinking this may just be normal reactions to the, the events that started to unfold. Uh, so the team is working through that. Uh, we are now in a position where we think everything's, uh, good. Uh, we but we, now we have this big road in front of us to get yep. back uh, reconfigured. So uh, we've got the water loop up. Uh, we're we're uh, as soon as we can get the MDM released. We've done uh, data dumps and stuff of the MDM to mm -hmm. to to know for certain the health of the MDM. Uh, as soon as we can release that to the ops team, then they will power cycle and see if we can recover these cards. That's important because we do want to get a look at the accumulator quantity before we bring the crew back in yep. um, to the U.S. segment just to be safe. Um, so that steps in front of us. The pow we're doing some power-ups now. We've got quite a few systems up. Actually integrating the loop B, the external loop B, into the system is the most a time-consuming one because you can't just flip a switch and have ammonia flow through all the heat oh, yeah. exchangers now because you, uh, because of the conditions now, you can freeze the heat exchanger and for sure cause a crack, which would end up introducing ammonia into the system. And yep. so that takes a little bit longer. Um, so we have a couple steps in front of us. Um, uh, the first is to get the power-ups done, uh, which the team is doing, or I should say one, is to get the power-ups power done done that the team is working on. Mm -hmm. And the second then is to get insight into the accumulator to uh, confirm that the system is tight like we uh, believe it to be. Uh, and so we can bring the crew back into the U.S. segment. So that's where we are right now. We would like to get the crew back in the U.S. segment tonight. Okay. Uh, that would be our goal. Um, it's While it's inconvenient for the crew to be in the Russian segment, it's certainly not um, unhealthy for them, mm -hmm. and so we'll do due diligence to make sure we've, we're comfortable with the environment before we send them in there. Okay, so crew kind of hanging out in the Russian segment right now. Mission Control going to walk through powering up a bunch of systems just to make sure. So a couple of systems, obviously non-critical systems, powered down. Any impacts to science, things like that, on board the station with this event? Well, there were there were two things two uh, things we were trying to do today. One was uh, get started with Micro Five, which mm -hmm. was an experiment we were going to do in the in the uh, microscience, microgravity sciences glove box. So people probably heard us getting configured, ready to start that. So that's been delayed, but it's not critical. We don't lose any research. Uh, the other one that we needed to deal with was fruit flies. And okay. <laughs> so this is what research is all about, yep. and uh, we have to have healthy fruit flies. So uh, the team's off looking at when we needed to feed the fruit flies. I think we were planning to do that today. I don't think it's required today, uh, and so that's part of what we need to answer. So there was some research we were going to get started mm -hmm. on. Um, but this uh, this would be a small blip. It, it's not uh, a major impact to, yeah, nothing, to the research lost. we're trying to get done. We we didn't lose any research. The uh, the freezers gets powered down as part of this, which have a lot of samples that yep. we w eventually bring home. But uh, the freezers are designed to go without power for a fairly long period of time, over eight hours. And we were well within that, and all the freezers are back up and running now. Okay. So uh, the research has been all protected, uh, and it's just uh, we'll have to replan, you know, the tomorrow and the subsequent days, but uh, it shouldn't result in any losses. And one other thing I want to touch on real quick, you know, so when the team saw the indicators, they snapped into action. It was all very quick when they made the decisions. Talk a little bit about, you know, some of the different emergencies that we're trained for, not only the astronauts, but the teams on the ground, and kind of how important it is to get that training, not only before flight, but also during flight. They're still training even while they're up there. Right, and this is, this is a really important uh, aspect because we don't have... Um, 
knock on wood, we haven't had any really major anomalies mm -hmm. like this that uh, cause us to get to the point where we're concerned about the crew's well-being and imminent uh, well-being. And so, um, but we have three major categories anomalies uh, that can put us in an emergency situation. Uh, one is uh, rapid depress, where mm -hmm. you could get an impact or something that causes us uh, to have a depress event. Um, the, the other one is a tox issue, and of course ammonia falls under the tox issue, yep. but there's other, um, there's other tox issues that can occur. Uh, on board, uh, but ammonia is the is the one that we trained the most for, mm -hmm. um, and then fire. Finally, is the fire uh, and smoke issue, and so um, while fire and ammonia leaks are very, very, very low uh, risk, all three of these types of anomalies we trained for on the ground um, in an integrated fashion with our Russian colleagues, mm -hmm. with the crew, uh, and then we actually practice them uh, once we get on orbit. Uh, to keep everybody sharp. Yep. Uh, these kinds of emergencies uh, start with protecting the crew, then trying to deal with the issue, and then if in the end we can't deal with the issue, um, uh, then we can, some of them can result uh, in evacuating the station. And so all of these steps have to be taken care of and make sure the crew is real sharp and the team's real sharp, because if they occur, in some cases, you have very little time to take the steps necessary to protect the crew. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is something that we train regularly. And you could tell today the team, um, really, there was never any risk to the crew. Um, we were watching the data and uh, and trying not to isolate them, but we 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 isolated them twice pretty fast so yeah. if we need to do it we know how to do it the crew knows what to do and in fact uh, after, after they isolated themselves in the russian segment um, butch called down and said hey he thought everything went really well mm -hmm. everybody was knew their jo jobs and got them down and and so we'll we'll debrief that to see if there's any lessons learned but it seemed like the team uh, as you would would expect uh, reacted uh, appropriately to the event all right well good to hear Happy words from the commander. Again, the crew safe inside the Russian segment, not in any danger. Uh, indicators pointing to no ammonia being leaked, but obviously the team here at Mission Control Houston uh, and at the partner sites all over the world continuing to work through the issue.